So there is no way of going around this. Now, whether we believe that Jesus is coming at any second, okay? We, we know that Jesus can come, according to Paul in Corinthians 50, in a twinkle of an eye. And we learned this morning that the twinkle of an eye is one thousand of a second. So imagine in one thousand of a second, we will hear the shout um, of God, we shall, we shall hear the trumpets trumpeting, we shall hear the voice of the archangel, and we see the glory uh, of uh, the returning Christ, all in a one tenth, sorry, one thousandth of a second. Imagine that. Imagine that. And as, G, as Paul was speaking, and he used we that are still alive, is a strong indication among others that G, Paul was also expecting Jesus to return at any time. Jesus also spoke about the second coming when he was answering questions from his disciples, what will be the signs of your second coming, of your return. We will talk about this in the next chapter and in the second book of of the second book of Thessalonians. We will see some of the signs. We will see that these signs are already being prepared. And we've talked about this some, some, a, a bit as, as well. So we can notice and we can be ready. Although Jesus never said the time, but he said he will return. It's like when a, a couple, a husband and wife are going out, the husband is ready, he's ready. But you never know when the wife is ready. So he's waiting. So we the church are waiting for Jesus to get ready and come for the church. Praise God. So I said it because I was challenged in different service that I need to say this. <laughs> um, so um, um, when this happens, when this happens, it is going to happen really quick. And we will not have time to say, okay, I think Jesus is coming next week, so I better find my calling, go to the pastor and say, what's my calling, or this is my calling, let me work hard in this coming week. It doesn't work like that. Because once you become born again, once you are declared, you have declared that Jesus Christ is your Lord, He is your Savior, from that day onward, you belong to Him. You have given your word to Jesus you have, that you are going to serve Him with all your life, with all your strength, with your all you have, you belong to Jesus. And that's why we have written the Gospel of John, whoever serves me must follow me where I am. Where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honor the one who serves me. Praise the Lord. <coughs> and that is why um, it's important to keep these things in mind. Because it's good to say, I believe that Jesus has come and met. And most of us, I, I, I hope that, you know, I don't know, I mean, you, you might have a different idea, but... And um, at least um, most of us believe in this church that we, the rapture is as we are explaining it right now. So if it is happening like this, if it's Jesus in a twinkle of an eye, the, the trump of God, the shout of our game, cage and so forth, we shall be changed. And we shall go to the cloud and meet Jesus there where we will remain with him forever. This is something that we must think about when we say, why I believe about the second coming of Jesus. Besides in the Bible we find that this is a major doctrine, Paul refers to it very much, connecting it most of the time with Jesus' resurrection. It's also connected with our response to this truth. The church in the first centuries formulated what we call the creeds, and in every creed, major creeds, we find that you have to believe that Jesus is coming back if you want to call yourself a Christian. So, knowing that Jesus is coming back is an important doctrine. 
And it's something, it's not because I say, I believe, yes. But does your life reflect that you believe that Jesus is coming back? And the reason I'm saying that, because whenever Paul speaks about these things, there is nearly every time a, a link or a reference to how we live. The most clear one is the one that I mentioned several times in Titus chapter 2 verse 11. Because we as Christians should be living as we are expecting our Lord, our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, to come for us, for His return. And if we really believe that, then we also need to believe that when He comes, He wants to come and find His servants serving Him. Hallelujah. So the question we need to ask ourselves, how committed I am to Jesus? Each one of us need to answer this question. How committed I am to Jesus? And one can say, I'm committed every Sunday. I think that's enough. After all, we believe in Shabbat, you know, one day a week we need to stop and rest and worship. Fine. We believe all in that beautiful day of Shabbat because that is the day, as we have learned, where we can be intimate with God. But what about the rest six days? What about, about that? Does that mean those six days I can live like hell and be like the devil? No. Never the Bible teaches that. But the Bible teaches that my life, from morning till evening, during my conscious time, I belong to Jesus. And I need to have Jesus in my heart and make him known to the world. But the point is now that if I believe this and I believe that Jesus is coming back, and I need to also live my life in honor of Him, then I shall know that when Jesus comes and I am with Him, something great is going to happen. And this is what we call the judgment seat. There is a seat um, with, with, on, before which we will all appear. The Greek is Dama, and the word Dama refers to a seat where people take rewards is different than the great white throne judgment which is another judgment but it does not belong to those who believe in Jesus today therefore we find that there are two judgments in the Bible one is immediately as we are caught off and beat Jesus in the sky Probably will have a meal with Jesus, the, Lord, the, 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 the Lord's Supper, and I don't know if it's before or after. And then we will appear before His throne and we all receive our crowns. Okay? We discussed this in details in um, a Bible study some time ago. We will all receive our crown, which is not a crown of gold, as we imagine it. It is a paint of reed, it is a paint of uh, plants, and signifying. Um, a crown of victory. So there are two different crowns in the Bible. One is called Stephanos, which is the crown of victory. Then there is the Dema, which is named the picture as a round thing, you know, um, um, which is a kingly um, type of crown. What we will receive is the reward type of crown. And some will have one, some will have more, and I hope that everybody has one because some may not have one because they just lived as a Christian, if I might use the words, to pass by. But if I have two crowns, if God set aside for me two crowns, I want two crowns. If He set one, I'm content with whatever Jesus is willing to give me. But I don't want to go to heaven and I see three crowns and He says, only oh, deserve one. And I don't think you should want that either. What I want is when I appear before Jesus, He will tell me, come in my faithful servant. And that is what each one of us should crave for uh, every single day of his life, that if Jesus comes to, to, to today, I will be found faithful. Remember those ten uh, virgins. Eh? Those were five, five were faithful and five were not faithful. And the question is, are you faithful? 
The reason I'm saying this wedge, or one of the reasons I'm saying this, is because in Thessalonians, going back to Thessalonians chapter 4, the chapter ends up with a very important scripture, which many of us, including me, uh, just skip it because, just read, I mean, just read through it to go to the next chapter uh, and miss, miss an important aspect unless we stop and meditate on it like we should do on every part of the scripture. Because verse 18 of chapter 4 says, Therefore, encourage each other with these words. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, we do need encouragement. Those who love God, those who love holiness, those who love what is right and hate what is wrong, needs encouragement today because what we see around us is the power of the spirit of the Antichrist working over time. Working very quick. I have spoken in some detail before on the subject and I don't want to um, use my time because it's very over. However, however, if I believe that Jesus is coming and look around my life and look around myself, look around what's happening in my country, what's happening in Europe, what's happening in the rest of the world, what do we see? Do we see anything which the world leaders has been promising for tens of years? Do we see any peace? We don't see any peace. Because peace will only come when people turn to Jesus. You cannot have man-made peace. Somehow, someone is going to manufacture this kind of peace, but it will be a false peace, which we know, uh, according to Scripture, that will be the Antichrist. We know that we're living in a world that it is safe to be a turtle egg on a beach than being a child in a womb. We're living in these days. And we look around us and see the natural disasters which um, uh, um, climate war is being played. What about God's judgment? Isn't God able to judge our countries for ignoring Him? Can He do that? Doesn't the Bible say that a sign of judgment, He will send fire from heaven? Have you seen fire from heaven on the news a, of, a week ago in California? Have you seen that cloud of fire coming down and burn a bunch of trees and acres of trees in, in just like that? Have you seen that on the week? You haven't seen that. Of course, a warmer, a global warming was, was blamed, even if it is, God speaks about fire coming from heaven as a judgment. What about the floods that we're experiencing in Europe today? Doesn't the Bible speak about the, 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 the environment changes that we see? Doesn't the Bible speak about um, uh, the asteroids and comets landing on earth? This year was one of the years that most had close encounters with comets coming close to the earth. The closest was about 14 million years away, uh, miles away, which of course uh, for those who study astronomy it's very near, for us it's very far. Um, and we are 14 million miles, about for those who study it's quite near. And the way they, pro they project their projection, some of them, some of these big rocks and one of them twice the size of the Statue of Liberty can hit anywhere on earth and in, they say in the next 10 years. Now if you go on YouTube and you um, make a little bit of search, you will find emanations about what can happen if something like that falls into the ocean. They, they kind of work it out of how the world of how we know it today will vanish. And yet, the Bible speaks about these things happening. The Bible speaks about one third of the trees being destroyed, 
not sure happening. The Bible speaks about the one third of the fresh water being destroyed. Go and look what happened. California has no water anymore. But of course, California is one of the worst places of sin that, that, that's in America, if not in the whole world. We can see God's judgment, but we don't see God's judgment. People don't want to see God's judgment. It's the same thing that we find in the book of Revelation. But it's also the same thing we find in the time of Noah and the time of Lot. The preachers were preaching about sin and about judgment and the people just laughed at them. But it happened. And the same thing today. It will happen because the word of God is truth. It will not change. It is not going to submit to the will of God because the word of God is God's word. It changes not. God said it will perform what I send it to do. And that is what God's word said. God's word said to us, the church, that at some point in time, appointed by him, not by man, he will come to take the church away before the time of wrath. Hallelujah. That's the word of God. And that is why we need to pray. We need to pray to encourage one another that even if things get bad and get worse than they are, Jesus is coming to take us home. Jesus said, he didn't try to be politically correct in any way or form. But he said, in this world you will have tribulation, you will have trouble. But rejoice. He said, I give you my peace. My peace. So that's the world will give you. I will give you my peace. And this is why we can, in this tribulation, this, in whatever you see is happening in front of our eyes, we should have the peace of God in our heart. Knowing that Jesus is coming back. These are the words that Paul wrote to the Thessalonians. And these are the words that are alive even and effective up to this day. Encourage each other with these words. We need to use these words, the doctrine of the second coming, to encourage one another. We are living in a time where our liberties are being taken away. We're living in a time where sin is taking over our laws. We're living in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a time where more, the sins that God hates, which is everyone, every, every kind of sin, but you know, we have specific like homosexuality and so forth, and the murder of children in the womb. People are advocating that. Little by little, the whole world is being taken over by the spirit of death. Jesus came to give life. Satan is around to bring death. Who do we serve? I hope you are saying we serve the author of life. We serve him with all our strength, with all our mind, with all our body. We serve the God that gives life. The God of order. Today, if you try to think with your mind, you can allow, you can you are not allowed to walk plus one equals two. Today, if you try to change mathematics, I've sh shared that link with 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 uh, uh, Sandro some time ago. This is tradition. One plus one equals two is tradition. You can do it. You can say what it ever it is. I wonder if the bank will agree if I have you know. Although it's like one, but makes one thousand. It's the same thing. Him. But anyhow, the point is they try to change the way we think. There is no rationality anymore. They try to take away that away from us. We know because at some point someone will come and will control the whole earth, and the whole earth will worship. We shall not worship no other god except the true God, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So let us encourage each other with these words. Jesus. Amen. Amen.